Hello, my name is Dave Shanley and I'm the lead engineer on the new Evo Rail Hyperconverged Infrastructure Appliance. In this video, I'm going to give you a guided tour through the configuration UI. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started here, and first of all, I have to accept the EULA. The Evo Rail does feature a Just Go option. This allows you to configure the appliance using a set of predefined variables. The only thing that the appliance will ask for is passwords. However, for this demo, we're going to customize the appliance. Let's start with DNS. Evo Rail comes with its own internal DNS server. This allows you to have fully qualified domain names without the need for an external DNS service. You can customize DNS by setting a hostname, separator, iterator, and a top level domain. Any changes that you make will be reflected in real time. So let's move on and configure our networking. You have control of your ESXi, vMotion, Virtual SAN, vCenter server, and your VM networks. To keep things simple, you don't have to edit each individual IP address. Instead, you create a network pool with a beginning and an ending IP. This allows Evo Rail to allocate IP addresses to groups of hosts. The minimum size of the IP address pool is four. This is because there are four hosts on a single appliance. If you plan on extending your Evo Rail cluster at a later date, then you should increase your pool size by four IP addresses per appliance that you plan to add to the cluster. You'll notice that there are no save buttons. This is because every change that you make is saved and validated in real time. When your configuration doesn't quite look right, Evo Rail will tell you exactly what the problem is and tell you where to go to fix it by using red orbs in the categories and highlighting each of the fields. You can have as many VM networks as you like each VM network can be configured with a name and a VLAN ID. The only passwords that Evo Rail requires you to configure are those for your vCenter server administrator account and your ESXi host root account. Evo Rail does not store these passwords. Globals are settings that apply to absolutely everything inside the appliance. This includes your hosts and your vCenter server. Logging is really simple. All you need to do to configure it is supply an IP address. We've already predefined the host name in your DNS. Evo Rail will handle the installation and configuration of the product for you, as well as the licensing. So there really is nothing more for you to do. We've included a couple of really useful features, like being able to upload an existing configuration file, so you don't have to spend time filling out all of the fields. The other is to be able to download the support logs. Once you're happy with your configuration, you can validate it. This process takes a closer inspection on all of your settings and makes sure that the configuration is valid and will work on the appliance. So off we go. Now we're building the appliance. This is where a lot of the really heavy lifting is being performed by Evo Rail. The UI tells you exactly how much of the process has been completed. It also shows you exactly which task is being executed. There are four main stages. As we progress, the UI shows you exactly where we are in the process. The first two stages involve installing and configuring DNS, as well as unpacking and configuring the vCenter server appliance. Once the initial setup has been performed, Evo Rail moves on to configuring the ESXi hosts. The ESXi hosts have not been configured. They don't even have an IP address. Normally, you'd have to use a console or an out-of-band management system to be able to configure these hosts. However, we've engineered our own implementation of zero-conf networking, and we baked it right into the very core of the Evo Rail. This allows the Evo Rail to be able to locate, connect to, and configure all of the hosts inside the appliance. It also means that Evo Rail appliances can recognize and locate each other. Evo Rail is cleaning up and putting things away, getting everything ready to start. And it's really that simple. Evo Rail is now fully configured and ready to start creating virtual machines. And so, that's about it from me. 
I do hope you've enjoyed your guided tour around VMware's new EvoRail Hyperconverged Infrastructure Appliance. My name is Dave Shanley, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.